All right, so we are back here working on the LS swapped OBS Chevy here, and what we're doing is we're trying to get our air conditioning functioning properly. Um, this is our PCM, and this is a green-blue PCM. So if you have a red PCM, you don't need to worry about it, but if you have a green-blue PCM, um, most of the green-blue PCMs do not take an analog input for AC control. Um, usually that's done on the green-blue over a class two serial data. It will work on a couple green blue PCMs that have these service numbers here. This information can be found on LT1 Swap's website, lt1swap.com. Um, but if you have any other service number that is not listed here, you will not be able to give it a 12 volt positive on 17, pin 17 of the C2 connector to turn on the air conditioning, which is what we're trying to do. We have already hooked our positive. Uh, input to pin 17 on the truck side of this and now we need to open up this PCM and modify the inside to uh, accept a positive signal. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to open it up, we're going to pull the circuit board out and we have ordered a 3000 ohm half watt 1210 resistor, we have ordered a 100,000 ohm half watt resistor and we have ordered a 1.2 nanofarad um, capacitor and basically what that's going to allow us to do is recreate the circuit that Chevy removed to accept a 12 volt AC input. Um, these are our parts we have ordered. I've ordered two of each just to be safe. Um, these are ordered from DigiKey. I will also put in the description uh, part numbers and links to the forum where I found all the information to do all this. There's there's a gentleman on the forum that was uh, took a deep look into how the air conditioner circuit works on these and basically reverse engineered the circuit, figured out how to put it back to accept an AC signal. So we're going to put these in and then we will go from there. So I'll open this up and I'll bring you back. So as far as actually removing the PCM out of the housing, you're going to have the four bolts that hold the cover on here. Um, that should pop right off. It's all done with rubber seals. So there's no glue or anything. It should come right up. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five and six bolts that hold the circuit board in four long ones two short ones remember where they go and then the circuit board will pop right out of the bottom cover careful not to wreck the rubber seal as it goes around the plugs up here as well and that is the circuit board out so now we're going to get to soldering we're going to add our resistors i think we have to remove one resistor on here and add a capacitor in its place and i will show you how that goes all right so we've got the pcm oriented in this direction um, the first resistor we are going to add is this guy. This should be our 3 kilo ohm half watt, 3 kilo ohm half watt resistor, which I have sitting on the table right there. I got two of them just in case. And that guy is going to go in our circuit board in this empty spot right here. So it's going to solder between these two pads on that empty spot. Um, I'm going to try and get that in here. Might have to get a tiny pair of tweezers because this thing is so small to hold it and then we'll solder it and then we will move to the next one. Alrighty, so it was a little tricky but I held it with the pick and if you can see, if I zoom in here, this right here is the new one, the one with no marking. So that is our 3000 ohm half watt. Now we're going to go to our next resistor, and the next resistor is a 100,000 ohm, and that guy is going to be going on the other side, so we'll flip this over. So now we have flipped over the computer to the other side of the board, and we're going to be looking, where we want to look on the board is right here by this 61. You're going to go up to this row, and I'm going to have to zoom in again here. But you go up to this row, and you see this has a blank here. There's nothing installed there. And then we have a resistor here. This blank is where we're going to install the 100,000 ohm resistor. Okay? We're going to install that. Once we install that, we're going to unsolder this resistor. And this is where we're going to add our capacitor in. So let me get this guy soldered in. I'll come back and show you then. And then we're going to remove this one. And this is where our capacitor goes. So you're going to have to be very, very careful with this resistor. There it is on the table relative to the end of this pick, relative to my finger. It is extremely small. I mean, extremely, extremely small. 
and it needs to go on the circuit board. Let's see, I can find it right there. Okay, went ahead and got our resistor installed. As you can see, the camera won't focus. It's so small. Okay, where were we? Resistor, 100,000 100, ohm resistor. Right there, installed. Now, this resistor, unsolder, replace with capacitor. Okay, same goes for capacitor. Also super duper extremely small. We're gonna do the same thing. Be very careful with it. I basically have been just placing them on the board, holding them down onto the board, pressing on them with the pick, and then soldering each end to get them to solder correctly and be in the correct position. Okay, on the right is the resistor we just removed. I'm gonna show you again. That resistor was located right there. This is the one we just added. We have removed this resistor. We are adding our capacitor, which is the white one. Where are they? Right here. That one is going in its place. This is the one we took out from the board. This is the one we are replacing it with. Alrighty, so here we go. There is our capacitor right there. So that's that. That should be it for the modifications to the board. Now I'm gonna also say, uh, if you do this, you do have to go into HP tuners and tell the PCM to look for a signal on the what was it pin 17 i believe input instead of class 2 serial um i'm going to put this back together i've already done that in hp tuners and loaded on this pcm and we will put it in the truck and i will show you if it works all right pcm is installed so you're going to see this in real time with me whether or not this works hopefully when we start it up and turn the AC on we'll hear a compressor still starts that's a good sign okay Fan on, and then we're going to turn on AC. Oh, and I heard engine bog down a little bit. Let's check the compressor. Compressor. No compressor. All right, so I figured it out after uh, double checking all of our wiring, ensuring that all of the pressure switches and everything were wired correctly. Um, I was looking on HP tuners and we were getting an AC request on the screen here. We were getting an AC request, but it was not activating the compressor, but it was not having a disable. The disable pressure was set to no. So that means the switch was grounding. It was receiving a request, but it wouldn't turn the compressor on. And I ended up going into the DTCs just to see if anything was going on there and it was setting a, I think it was a P0520 uh, pressure sensor code. So the compressor, if you flash the PCM, the compressor would run for about three seconds and then it would throw that code and basically shut the whole AC system down. Um, so I just went into HP tuners and permanently uh, disabled that code. And now, as you can see, AC active, AC requested, and then AC clutch engaged and the AC is actually currently running on the truck. So there you go, compressors running through all the stock wiring and pressure switches of the truck. Um, I did some looking on forums and I couldn't find anybody else that had that problem. So if you have everything wired correctly, you changed all your setting in HP tuners. I think in HP tuners I can show you here, we are using, it was this code, P0530 AC refrigerant pressure sensor A circuit. And I changed it to no error reported and now the AC works fine. So it's just these little things that are hard to figure out. Um, also, you have to make sure this is set to analog cycling under your AC tab in your system configuration. And there you go, we have perfectly functioning air conditioning now. So that's that. Um, we now have AC on this truck, which is awesome because it's starting to get warmer out. And that's it for the end of this video. Hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully someone can learn from me. And I will see you next time, as always, Please, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and I will see you next time.